Godzilla vs. Kong came out in 2021, directed by Adam Webster, starring Alexander Skarsgård, Millie Bobby Brown, Rebecca Hall, and a bunch of other people, including like Isaac Gonzalez, Julian Dennison, who was in Deadpool 2, bunch of bunch of people, and of course starring the big monkey and the big lizard. The two stars that we're all mainly going to watch the movie for anyway. So this movie takes place a few years after Godzilla King of the Monsters, after Godzilla raised another part of the US in his fight against Ghidorah and the other Titans. Obviously takes place decades after Kong Skull Island. So Kong is a lot bigger now. He really is the king. And yeah, we finally get to see the two big boys have a punch on. And it was good. It was... It was fun, man. It was really fun. You know, they had the scene that you saw in the trailers where it was on the battleships out in the ocean. That was fucking sick. Then, mate, they have this insane throwdown in Hong Kong where they just level that entire city. It was on the same level as the Man of Steel final fight between Zod and Superman where they just fucking lay waste to Metropolis. This is the one that I've been waiting for most during this sort of COVID period. It's the one that I had the most, I guess, faith in because you're not expecting much from it. You were literally just expecting big monsters, big fight, and that's it. A little bit of fun on the way. And that's what we got, really. Like, yeah, the plot is a little bit nonsensical. Like, yeah, it's weird that there's this hollow earth ecosystem, you know, that's home to all these monsters and it's home to where King Kong lives and there's this fucking palace and shit in there. Like, yes, a lot of it is super ridiculous. The tech is really ridiculous. The villains are ridiculous, you know, what they want. But it's fun. It's just stupid and it's fun and it doesn't take itself seriously. And that's what I wanted. I just wanted a stupid, fun action movie. Go to the cinema, grab your popcorn, grab your ice cream, sit there and just watch shit blow up on the screen for two hours. Sit there and watch these comic relief characters make, you know, silly jokes and make these ridiculous one-liners and just do bizarre things and get stuck in these ridiculous situations. That's the kind of thing that you want when you go to the movies. You want to be entertained, and this movie is super entertaining. I'm a massive, massive fan of all the sort of, like, monster movies. I love them. I've loved them since that 90s Godzilla movie, you know? The one with Gene Reno and the... What did you see, old man? Gojira. Gojira. <laughs> oh god that movie was so good that movie was ahead of its time honestly go back and watch it it's really good so basic plot for the film you've got alexander skarsgård's character who is a scientist that believed in the hollow earth theory in the middle of the earth there was this untouched environment full of you know natural resources and powers and different animals and monsters and such and the sort of thing that could hold the key to humanity's progression really or evolution he's contacted by the boss of the apex corporation they're the ones who who are essentially the leading the leading technology company in the world and they're the ones who are trying to take the fight back to the Titans, you know. Not that they needed to, but as humanity always does, we have to be number one. We could never envision ourselves being less than something else. So, so they enlist the help of Alexander Skarsgård's character. He then understands that he requires a Titan to take him to Hollow Earth. And the only Titan he knows that is being controlled currently is Kong. And that's where we meet Rebecca Hall's character. She's the scientist who has spent the last 10, 15 years studying Kong and learning from him. And so in the meantime, Godzilla's been wreaking havoc on certain parts of the world. Uh, he's been attacking Apex facilities because he's... There's something going on. There's something dodgy going on that we don't we don't quite know what's happening. Why is he attacking these cities? Why is he attacking these particular facilities? Which we, of course, find out later on. There's a reason that, you know, obviously, obviously there's a reason for it. Godzilla's a good dude. He doesn't just go and attack shit for no reason. I don't really want to spoil anything in this movie. You do... You can tell what's going to happen. Like, you know they're going to fight and you know they're going to be friends at the end, but it's the little things in between that sort of, like, connect to each other that I don't really want to spoil for you. You know, it does have that sort of Batman v Superman plot. They're these two alphas, and it's like they can't coexist in the same space, and then they have a big fight, and then end up becoming friends through some sort of convoluted thing. And it's like, that happens here, but you don't care, because it's just fun. Look, guys, if you want to have a good time in the movies, if you like action movies, if you like monsters, if you like anything, if you like Godzilla, if you like King Kong, 
You know, if you like the actors in here, if you like Alexander Skarsgård, if you like Millie Bobby Brown, if you like Isa Gonzalez, you might be a bit disappointed with her because she wasn't really given a lot to do. To be fair, a lot of the human characters weren't given a lot to do, but they're not the stars of the show. And I think by now, this movie and this series has figured that out. We are here to see the monsters and you see the monsters for the majority of this film. There's like long close-ups of Godzilla's face and Kong's face. This one's super, super fun. This is one of those ones that you have to go and see it at the cinema. Like, it would still be fun watching it at home if you had, like, you know, HBO Max the way that they do in the States at the moment for all these big movies that are coming out. But for us here in Australia, if you just want to have a good time, man, go and see Godzilla vs. Kong. You don't really need to see any of the previous movies either. All you need to know is that Godzilla is the king, you know, the current king of the monsters. King Kong has been sort of isolated from the world for the last 30, 40 years. So the world doesn't really know of his existence and neither does Godzilla because he's sort of been hidden away in this sort of secret area. Once he's been released from his area, then you get the punchy punchy between the two monsters. Final verdict, probably an eight out of 10. I think really, really solid, really fun. Now, obviously to get anything higher than an eight, it's gotta be like a unbelievably just genius concept, unbelievable new stuff that we've seen, really unbelievably good dialogue. This one here, I had such a good time and it's like it gave me everything I wanted. It didn't disappoint me in any way at all. Now that for me is an 8 out of 10. An 8 out of 10 is a great film. Great film worth spending money on, worth going to the cinemas to see, worth watching multiple times. If you've seen it, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below. Tell me in the comments what your favourite monster movie is. Mine is definitely the Godzilla film from the 90s. It's schlock, pure schlock, but it's fucking good and Gene Reno in there, like... <laughs> <laughs> dominates. Alright guys, I'll see you on the next one. Be good people.